welcome to Victory Fellowship Church online service. We are glad you're joining us today. For those that are joining us for the very first time, we say welcome. We love and appreciate you. For our regulars, please remember to share the link to this message to all your loved ones. Freely you receive, freely you give. Our sole purpose here at Victory Fellowship is to root, ground, and establish you in the Word of God. In this season, open your hearts that you may receive the Word and that you may grow spiritually. Remember, stay connected, stay safe, look, see, hear, and take this Word to heart. Morning viewers all over the world, wherever you are, um, watching us this morning as we give you today's Living Word. Would you kindly like us and share or comment on our Facebook page or subscribe on our YouTube page which is shown below our message today. We would like to welcome you to our sermon for today and may the Lord bless you as you watch and as you bring your family and friends to watch and share what the Lord has for us today. Have a good day. Amen. Greetings. We love you, appreciate you. And uh, thank you for being part of the service. I want to just share a message today that is probably not a common one, but uh, does necessary need uh, dealing with. And so today we want to talk about down but not out. And so just before we begin, let's pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we just come. We thank you that your word is quick, it's powerful, it's active, it's alive, and it will accomplish what you desire today. I thank you that, Lord, you're going to just challenge every heart, every life, and you're just going to do something amazing in our hearts. Pray for beauty today as she interprets that, Lord, you just touch her, you strengthen her, you encourage her in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Like I said, we're talking about down but not out. And so as a reading, I wanted us to read 1 Peter 1, 6 to 9. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes though it is tested by fire, may be found to, to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is an inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. For the sake of Christ, then I am content with weakness, insults, hardships, persecutions, calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. As we've read these scriptures, I really believe we can identify with them. And this is what's happening right now. Many of us are going through things that we haven't experienced before. And uh, we're experiencing things that are not common. Or should I say, have not been common. And we are in a season and in a time of much difficulty and much hardship. And I believe that the Lord has an encouragement for us today. So we find that there are times when it seems like everything goes wrong and the bottom falls out of life. 
I read about a man stopped by a policeman. Ubale ngomuntu owadlula phansi kwepolisa. For driving without a tail light. Ngoba waye driver yena ngela light la ngemuva. The driver became very distressed. Umchayeli wemota leyo yena wakhathazela. And the policeman had to calm him down. Umpolisa leyo yena wabe sengathi uyamthoba. He said don't take it so hard. Wathi ngakuthathi kanzima lo. It's a minor offense. Yinto encane. The man answered and said that's not the point. What worries me is what is happening to my wife and my trailer. Maybe things haven't happened to you quite as dramatic. But nonetheless, there is times recently when the bottom fallen out of life. That which I want to ask today is why is why i think of something that was circulating on an email a little while back and the question asked there was why and uh, just this just came to mind again i looked at the dictionary and the word why means for what reason or purpose let me ask you this if it was only a 3 hour trip why did Mrs. Chawara take so many clothes with her? Why buy a product that takes 200 flushes to get rid of it? Why doesn't glue stick to the inside of the bottle? Even more ridiculous, why isn't there mouse-flavored cat food? Here's a good one. Why do they report power outages on TV? Even a better one. Why do they lock the petrol station's toilets? I was just thinking about that. And probably the answer is, or my answer is, are they afraid that somebody will clean them? But getting back to our topic today, the why I want to ask is why does the bottom fall out of life. Why do we encounter so many difficulties and hardships? Why is there so much pressure at the moment? Peter gives us the answer. But I want us to remember and hold it right in the front of us that we may be down but not out. Let me get to my first point. Let's consider the trials that are painful. In verse 6, we read, In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials. Peter speaks of heaviness. He speaks about being grieved. Or a grief that comes through various trials. The King James says manifold temptations. So the word temptation or trials speaks of adversity. And again, as we look at the word adversity, in English it has many meanings. Misfortune. Bad luck. 
trouble, difficulty, hardship, distress, disaster, misadventure, suffering. So all of these things are applicable to us. So let's talk about the different types of trials or tests. We saw various or manifold. These are the, the tests in, in character. And if we look at it and uh, break it down, the word various or manifold me literally means variegated. Or, or many colored. There are blue Mondays. The grey Tuesdays. And of course, every now and then we have this Black Friday. So my point here is that our trials are sometimes physical financial, emotional, as well as spiritual. So the trials come in many colors, many shapes, many sizes. They may come from heaven or hell. They may come from a friend or an enemy. They may come in the night or in the light. It may be one kind this week and another kind the next week. And so these trials or these things that come our way, they are distressing trials. And let's talk about distressing nature of these trials. Getting back to the two words I used, grieved or heaviness, they simply mean to distress, to cause grief or to make sorrowful. So the conclusion in that is that trials can be very distressing, very devastating, very dis depressing and they can leave us in great heaviness. Let's see what the scripture says. I think of David in the Psalms. Psalm 55 verses 5 to 7. He says, fear and trembling come upon me. I want us to hear and listen to the way he describes it. Fear and trembling came or comes upon me. And horror overwhelms me. And I say, Oh, that I had wings like a dove. I would fly away and be at rest. Yes, I would wander far away. I would lodge in the wilderness. Hallelujah. Amen. What he's saying is because of the fear, the trembling, the horror that overwhelms me, I wish I could just fly away. I, could, I wish I could just wander away and go and stay in, in the bush. You see, he was so distressed, so discouraged, so despairing of life, he wished he could just get away. Possibly fly off in the night and never come back again. 
You see the bottom falling out of life. Is one way of describing these trials and these difficulties and hardships. That seem to just come at all of us. Let's go on and look at the second kind of trial. Or my second thought. Let's look at the trials that are particular or peculiar. And I'm talking here about in their experience. If we look at the portion of scripture in verse 6, in one version it says, if need be, in others it's often if necessary. I wonder if Peter could be saying that sometimes there's a need for the bottom to fall out of life. In the natural, we would never think of a time that things should go wrong in our lives. Or the need for the winds of adversity to blow our way. In fact, right now, none of us needs anything else to happen in our lives right now. So now, my question, why? What's the reason? What's the purpose? The first thought, could it be God's way of breaking us or getting our attention? What comes to mind is the prodigal son who left his father's house. He went into a far country and for a short time lived it up as we might say. But then one day he found himself at the bottom. He found himself in a pig pen. Luke 15 and verse 17 says he came to himself. It was only when the bottom fell out that he came to his senses. And could I say this? Only God knows how to bring the prodigal home. But it had to come to that place in the pig pen when the bottom had fallen out that he comes to his sins. Let's look somewhere else. Let's look at the psalmist. And he says, before I was afflicted, I went astray. Before things happened in my life, before the bottom fell out, I went astray. But now I keep your word. Hallelujah. Amen. He comes to his senses after the affliction and now declares, I keep your word. The psalmist admits that at one point in his life he had strayed. Let's apply it. Maybe you have strayed. And you can relate to what the psalmist is saying here. Or you can't relate. But the psalmist declares that God used affliction to bring him back. A painful experience to get his attention. Let me just share a little thought here or story. A certain elder in a church 
who had made a tremendous amount of money in business finally saw his business collapse and his fortune vanish. Here is what he said to his pastor. I am glad that I failed because I was getting away from God. See, God has brought many down and many back by letting the bottom fall out. One thinks of Naomi. We read of how Naomi testifies. And I quote, she said to them, do not call me Naomi. Call me Mara. Mara. For the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. Remember, it was the Almighty, it was God who had dealt very bitterly with her. Verse 21. I went away full and the Lord has brought me back empty. Why call me Naomi when the Lord has testified against me and the Almighty has brought calamity or if you like affliction upon me. That was in Ruth 1, 20 and 21. One thinks of Jonah. Just a few nights in the belly of a whale turn things around for him. This could be certain of you. You leave the light and you will be in darkness. Someone once said, trials are any of the following. Trouble. Worry. Anxiety. Burden. Affliction. Ordeal. Tribulation. Adversity. Hardship. Tragedy, trauma, reverse, setback, difficulty, problem, misfortune, bad luck, ill fortune, mishap, misadventure, suffering, distress, misery, rich wretchedness, unhappiness, sadness, woe, grief, pain. How did she do? <laughs> and and our God's megaphone to our to get our attention. So any of these or a combination of these could it be that God is trying to get our attention? Another story is told of a 36-year-old woman who became the victim of amnesia, memory loss. So she lost her memory. For three months, she wandered around aimlessly. But during a severe thunderstorm. She suddenly remembered who she was and where she was from. The storm jolted her memory back. My question this morning is how often the storms of life 
will jolt us back to our sins. But do we realize that God sends them? Not to destroy us, but to help us. If we are honest this morning, many of us can look back and thank God for the storms that brought us back to him. On the other hand, why? What's the reason or the purpose? The second thought that I just want to bring out is that it may be God's way of building us. Not only getting our attention, but building us up. Someone has said that trials are God's divine gymnasium. Whereby he develops our spiritual muscles. Listen carefully, listen carefully to what Peter said. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself, will himself restore confirm, strengthen, and establish you. 1 Peter 5.10 Hallelujah. Amen. So after we have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, Hallelujah, Amen. will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. Let me just relate something that, of course, is uh, applicable to me. I understand it. But I believe it will just help us understand what I'm saying here. Every year in October, at the Coronoda Naval Amphibious base in San Diego. A Coronda Naval Amphibious base, Conangale San Diego. In California, America. A California Conangale Melica. There begins what is called Hell Week. Pula le Gugala le Vigilo Tai, ye Hell Week. It is part of the Navy's basic underwater demolition school. Queen Lenye, ya lava ben Navy, ye underwater demolition school where sailors are turned into seals. Interesting to note that even our army has one of these type bases. And it's called Wafa Wafa. They do a similar thing. Let's just talk about what happens there. This is a period of torturous physical and psychological training. And this begins on a Sunday night. Lights flash as the recruits are awakened by an instructor. Next to one ear, a machine gun is fired with blanks. A jet of cold water from a garden hose is digging into the other ear. The instructors are shouting out instructions. We have a mission to perform this evening. And I want you to listen to every detail I have for you. This mission turns out to be exercising and lying wet and almost naked on cold steel plates. 
That's just the start. Monday, the six-man teams are ordered to run races with a 250-pound boat upon their heads. Tuesday, with less than an hour of sleep that night, they have to row those boats across water there and back a trip of 18 miles. Wednesday, the men continue the races with the boats bouncing on their heads. Their boots sinking in the soft sand. The evening, they run again. At midnight, they are ordered to to lie naked in the cold pounding surf of the sea. Every 10 minutes they made to stand up to get the full effects of the wind. By Thursday morning everyone is hallucinating. By Friday afternoon the week is over and the new seals are lined up to be checked by a doctor. What is the Navy doing? And why? You see, by pushing these men to the very brink of insanity, these men are being transformed into some of the toughest human beings in the world. So our question again, why? Why? What's the reason or the purpose? Why does God let the bottom fall out of life? My answer this morning is to build us and make us strong and the very best that we can be. You see, he prunes us to make us better. John 15, 4 to 8. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. Whatever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he's thrown away like a branch and with this. And the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burnt. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, Ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. By this, my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciple. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a process, beloved. But it will bear fruit. We've just got to continue to abide and remain. And then we will reap. You may be asking, why? 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 My third thought it may be God's way of blessing us. Most want God's blessings without any cost involved. But the truth of the matter is the richest blessings of the Lord 
often come through adversity. Someone has said the thickest cloud might bring the heaviest shower of blessings. Let's just talk about someone we probably all have heard of. Charles Spurgeon began to conduct services in the Royal Surrey Gardens Music Hall in London. The building seated 12,000 and it filled. An additional 10,000 were gathered on the outside. A group of young men had conspired to disrupt the services. While Spurgeon was praying, they began to yell out, fire, fire, the galleries are falling. Panic broke out and seven people were trampled to death. There were 28 that were seriously injured and hospitalized. fell apart and had to be carried from the platform. The emotional shock and the strain of the tragedy almost caused him to leave the ministry. Years later, he was able to see that God brought good out of the tragedy. He testifies in his autobiography and says that frightful calamity the impression of which can never be erased from our mind became in the providence of God one of the wonderful means of turning public attention to the services. And I do not doubt that fearful catastrophe though it was has been the mother of multitudes of blessings. Hallelujah. It may be that God wants to break us, build us, or bless us. And if need be, the bottom falls out of life. Remember, down but not out. We may go down but we never are out. Let's look at the third area. Trials that are productive. Those tests that are effective. In verse 7, uh, we read, so that the tested genuineness of your faith more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Peter tells us that the end result of the bottom falling out of life is actually twofold. One, there is a life that is purified. Peter speaks of faith being tested by fire. And uh, he had in mind when he said this 
the furnace of a goldsmith. He would put the precious metal into a smeltering furnace for the purpose of removing the impurities. It is said that the eastern goldsmith kept the metal in the furnace until he could see his face reflected in it. So the end result of the bottom falling out of life is to confront sin, to confess sin, and to be cleansed from Sin. You see, secondly, there is a Lord that is glorified. So the question again, why does the bottom fall out of life? That we might be found unto praise, honor, and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Listen, no longer do we live selfish lives but submitted lives. No longer do we flee God but follow God. Instead of our Lord being grieved by our lives, He is glorified by our lives. He may let the bottom fall out of life to break us, build us, or bless us. But in the end, he is the one who is glorified and that's what he was after all along. Down but never out. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's come to a conclusion here. 2 Corinthians 12 12.10 For the sake of Christ's then I am content with weakness, insults, hardship, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. This is what the Apostle Paul said. It seemed that he understood this. We are still in a season where we want to hear the stuff we want to hear. Faith is great as long as these are the things that aren't involved. Serving the Lord is great as long as we don't go through any pressure. And, uh, well, if we receive a prophecy that sounds good, then that's okay. If we bless continually, that's okay. But many times we don't want to deal with weakness, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. We don't want to come to the place where we are weak so that we can really be strong. So in my conclusion, has the bottom fallen out of some part of your life? Down, but not out. Remember, are you facing adversity, affliction, and trials? Remember, down but not out. What is your response wena, to them going to be? Wena uza, uza umuntu wena la I would just remind you that just as the heat from the sun 
ukuthi khona ukugudumezwa ukusikudumale suka soften wax khona sizancibilikisa ikhandlela it will harden clay kodwa sizawomisa umdaka the heat from our trials inkisa ukusuka yenkinga can either soften our hearts toward god ungayenza inhliziyo zethu zibe buthakathaka phambi kwankulu or it can harden our heart toward him ungayenza ukuthi inhliziyo zethu ziwome phambi kwankulu regardless of what you might be facing today noma yini wena okhangelane layo namuhla you need to remember this god knows about it and could he be using it in your life mhlawumbe ngabe kusebenzisa empilweni yakho for your good and for his glory for your good and his glory 2 Corinthians 4:16 to 18 Aba se Corinthians 2 we we sibili 4:16 kusiya ku 18 So we do not lose heart Singalahli ithemba Though our outer self is wasting away Noma ingaphandle yethu yona iyaphela Our inner self is being renewed day by day Kodwa ingaphakathi yethu yaguqulwa nsuku ngensuku For this light momentary Ngo isikha ilobu bukhanya Affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not to the things that are seen but to the things that are unseen for the things that are seen are transcendent but the things that are unseen are eternal we received this scripture 2 years ago it's one of our themes it was in the theme of what God was saying and doing. And it comes back at this point. In the midst of this pandemic. And I believe it just challenges us again. It's not what we see. But it's the unseen things. We down. But never never out. I trust this morning you've been challenged that you don't see the trials as a difficulty and a hardship as, a, as something that's going to put you out but rather it's something that you can be lifted in and so beloved today let's not just look at what's going on But let's look above those things let's look to the lord and let him do something in our hearts and lives remember we might be down but never never out He's got us in the palm of his hands and he'll never let us go hallelujah Amen. hallelujah Amen. Let's pray. Father in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you that even as we've considered this message that Lord right now in Jesus mighty name you strengthen us you comfort us you be a source in our lives. I thank you that the word is quick and it's powerful and Lord it will discern between bone and marrow. And Father I thank you that it reaches into the inner part it touches our hearts today and father i thank you that many of us will just come to our senses again we'll be jolted again and brought back father to that place where father we can just touch you in the mighty name of jesus and father i thank you that lord right now we just quickened by that word i thank you today that lord you'll never leave us you'll never forsake us And Father, you are with us in Jesus name. Amen.